Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. This old man was waiting for consolation. This is not a word we hear much today in our society. Modern man tries to eliminate suffering, hardship, and difficulties. We want to fix the problem, to prevent them from ever happening, not to be consoled or comforted. Christians are considered foolish for letting God lead their lives in all aspects and for praying to him and lead us not into temptation and believing that God is really good. But having a comfortable lifestyle is not the same thing as being comforted. Taking it easy means avoiding hardship. But the consolation Simeon was waiting for was the promise of God's salvation in the flesh, God himself. He was not looking for relief from arthritis. He was not looking for a stronger back. He was not looking for a cure for cancer. He didn't want to live to 125. He was waiting for God to keep his promises. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So what do you wait for? A vacation? Or perhaps for the Christmas break to be over? Retirement? Kids leaving the house, better health. These do not offer real comfort. We cannot count on them, and they might not even be good for us. They cannot be what keeps us going, the thought of an easier, better life here on earth. For the wrong consolation is a false idol, if people trust in it. It ignores the true consolation of Israel, God's people, the redeemed who trust in the Lord. Our comfort is not an object. It is not something money can buy. Jesus tells us, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. We dismiss God and make him small, when we find comfort in the things of this earth. Idols and false gods are easily made out of even good things. The ideal Mr. Right, the perfect wife, the successful child, a better and new government leader. These are not sources of comfort. They do not take away sin. They do not grant eternal life. And after all, every person is subject to sin and death, except one. The one born here, our true consolation, Jesus of Nazareth. The problem is not other people. The problem is your sin against God, that you have offended him in word and deed. It's not the stuff that you can't get. The one thing we all lack is love that is pure and holy for God. And nothing can really satisfy us without this knowledge of God. Those who seek satisfaction in things are not comforted. Instead, they will be greatly troubled at the last day when those things are taken away. Many people think that family, friends, romance are the most important things, that they will fulfill them. But those who look to them for consolation are destined for slavery, to human idols. And how many in our world today think that feelings in romance trumps God's institution of marriage? That these things are a reason to break God's one flesh union that he has made and making it okay to divorce 
Or many say that children are evil and should be getting, gotten rid of by murder because they make life a little more challenging. They don't make it easier. But this signals their God, the false God of comfort. A false faith in easy days right here. They will end in death. In physical Israel, the Jews still make the same mistake today, thinking their consolation is physical, a piece of land, in their case, a specific land in the Middle East, is all important to them. They're willing to fight and die over it. While Jesus, the one who fulfilled the divine promises, whose body is the temple of God, is ignored. But the true consolation of Israel, the consolation of Simeon, is also your consolation. The God-man who takes away your sins. He's the only true comfort. He's a person. He's not a thing. He's the only one who has been born who is not a sinner after the likeness of Adam. And Jesus came for you in order to take away your guilt. And he bore your sins to the awful cross, putting them to death. When you trust in this forgiveness, no one can take this comfort away from you. No situation is so bad it is not relevant and valid. And even while this world is passing away, we look forward to a better world a life from God, in God and with God, who is Jesus. So we look for consolation. But we cannot get it ourselves. Instead, it comes to us in the Word. We don't go to Bethlehem. Christ is wrapped up with a bow for us in the forgiveness of sins. So seek peace with God in Christ, not just an easier time right now. Trust his will in all things and rest fully in his care and know that he will take care of you. Wait like old Simeon, for there is no true peace apart from waiting in faith. And what is faith but waiting for God to act and keep his promises? And what has he promised you? He has promised to raise you from the dead so that you will be with him forever. Are your problems very different than Simeon's? It might seem so. We are separated by thousands of miles and many centuries and much technological innovation. But not really. We have the same problem, that of sin. And we have the same consolation, the sin bearer, Christ for in this person born holy, we have all of God's favor and goodness given to us. And in him, because he rose from the dead, we will not be disappointed. For this baby has consoled millions who have no real prospects of success in this world. That Jesus is the consolation of all. He is the Christ. But only the troubled can stand this comfort and want to hear it. The full, the rich, the satisfied of heart, they do not want Christ. They are too busy trusting in temporary things or in people that are fading like flowers. So what does God do? He humbles us with suffering and tribulation. <coughs> So we do not seek the false comforts of this world so that we hold out for a real and lasting comfort in Jesus. And doesn't Jesus tell us, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Those who are comfortable in this world must be troubled. And that is part of my job as a called servant of Christ, to expose your sin and guilt to make you troubled before God. But when you are troubled, I am to give you Christ, the true consolation, who takes away all your sin. 
And so we must have the right problems. We must be made real lawbreakers and enemies of God according to our sinful nature. And if you have the true consolation, it will never be taken from you. And of course, even though I preach it, I do not fully trust in it. I don't completely grasp it. I also wait in weakness, like all Christians, like Simeon did, to see Christ. For doubt and sin to be dispelled completely. It is Christian to wait quietly for the Lord. The comfort of Christ is the removal of your guilt, and it is yours. What Simeon sought, what he received in Jesus, know also that Jesus was born for you. Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. This dismissal is not from class. It's not from a job. It's not from his family. It's leaving this world to be with the gracious God. Because of Jesus, death does not have to be avoided or feared. Jesus attacked it head on. He took the sting of death away by the holy sacrifice of his body. And so we are bold in Christmas joy. Even when we face challenges and difficult circumstances. Because our God is bigger than all things that we see. He is good to us. And death has already been defeated. For Jesus was born a baby for one thing. To die. To die in your place for your sin. But he was raised in justification. So rest in your justification by God. There is now peace between you and the Holy God in Christ. Christmas means not only that Jesus was born, but that God has come and he is still with us, and he will be with us forever. So we trust that we will be dismissed in peace too, because we have consolation. This is what we wait for and what we hope for. When Christ returns, we will see him. And then we'll be rescued from every evil. We strive to be consoled by God because we are troubled now. So we do not pray for relief only for God to take away our problems. We pray for gospel comfort. We pray for endurance and for faith to wait for the Lord. And the Lord, he promises, comforts you in all your troubles even if he does not take them away. Be consoled by the true consolation of Israel as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.